Good morning. Welcome to the second day of uh, Brot Düsseldorf. Welcome to the second day uh, of the Blue Innovation Doc. My name is Markus Kreil. You will see me here the next couple of days. If you want or not, uh, I will be here until <laughs> Thursday uh, noon. This day is about sustainable propulsion, and we'll start uh, with a study. Boat Düsseldorf and the European Boating Industry initiated a study on sustainable propulsion, and uh, I'd like to ask uh, Petros Michelidakis, Director of Boat Düsseldorf, and Philip Eastel, Secretary General of EBI, on stage. Good Welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Hello. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it works. Good morning. Yes. Thank Good you. Good morning, Mark. Petros. Uh, Petros, uh, the study. Why did you initiate this on sustainable propulsion? As you know, preparing a show is something which takes time. It's not one year. It's years before a show we start thinking about the tendencies. And. It is clear, although it's only 3% at the moment, that the tendency is going very much to sustainability. It's going very much also into electric propulsion because uh, the systems are getting better, the concepts are getting better. Some of them we have here with uh, e-propulsion, torpedo, and of course with uh, the new concept from uh, Mercury, which belongs to the Brunswick Group. And if you are Brunswick or Beneteau or a big company, then it's very easy to have a marketing budget for a study. But if you're a small company, then it's uh, not easy to spend uh, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 euro to have a study just to know what's about. We always say that Port Düsseldorf is here to support the industry. And we found, of course, since years now, a very good partner, which is uh, the European boating industry. So I said, okay, Philip, let's see what we can do. This and this is needed. And we have the money, you have the knowledge and the contacts. And then the third point was, okay, we need fast a group of people who are real boaters. And then it came up that the ADAC, where is Stefan, said, hey guys, I have a group of 1,500 active boaters and I can ask them, I can give them the questions from CTEACH, our company which will present the study, and then we have a quality and a quantity study plus the asking of, of, the, um, of the shipyards and the associations. In this way, we have a complete picture and we decided not only to pay for the study, but we decided also after Boat Düsseldorf to have a very large consumption summary of the study offered free of charge at the internet at boat.com. And this is for the industry, this is necessary because we have to know where we are going. We have to know how big will this market grow. We have to know what the boater is thinking about it, what the sailor, what the motor boater is thinking about, it, in which regions can sustainable electric or other kinds of propulsions be a solution and where not. And this is why we did the study. Sorry for the long answer, but no, no, you know, no. It's it uh, I mean, uh, just just a second because uh, I had a, I had some a chance to walk around yesterday, and I mean, Hall Four is filled with these vessels, uh, maybe fifty percent already. Yeah, we have, and that's why the Blue Innovation Doc is for. And thank you all for being here, and I hope that it will be recognized as the initiative platform for communication between the decision takers, the political decision takers. It is important to talk. It is important to find solutions which are not taking huge amounts of money for R&D because we cannot compare ourselves with the automotive industry. This is a lot of money they can spend. It's not the same with us. When I say us, I mean the boating industry, the water sport industry. That's why we need to talk and create a framework. This is why we did this. And we have inside this framework create solutions which are available for all the industry 
but in which they can also find themselves the special solutions to be different from each other. It is possible, we have just to talk. We need the infrastructure in the marinas. We need the new builded marinas to have a framework, a regulation to say, okay, guy, if you do that, you need to have three plugs for electric propulsion in the next five years and 10 in the next 10 years. And we pay, we subsidize the 50% of the installation because the cars are subsidized in almost every country with eight, 10,000 euro. And we as a boater, we are not subsidized. Why? <laughs> How do I know that the car is used for work? All cars are subsidized. Why don't we? So these are things, Linus, you are here. Thank you very much from the European Commission. And he is listening and trying to help. And a lot of other people will be here during the week. We have to talk, we have to find these solutions. And we are a very sustainable industry, not only because we are participating with 0.1% in the CO2 uh, exod of in Europe with six and a half million boats, but despite we do only 0.1%, we are trying to get more sustainable in materials, in propulsion, in handling, because we need clear waters, we need a clear climate, and that is all about. Thank you very much. You, you can hear the Greek, the Greek blood yeah. and temperament. Um, very good, thank you. Philip, um, Petros mentioned already why it's so important to have this study for the smaller enterprises, for the smaller companies, right? How, how can I come in after such a passionate speech? Uh, Petros? It's impossible to compete. But anyway, everything that Petros has said is absolutely true. We need, um, we need the certainty for the market. We need the certainty for the entire market to understand which direction other companies are going towards in terms of sustainable propulsion. We also need the information from the consumers. What is important for the consumers? Do they want an electric uh, boat because they have an electric car and they know that's the future for automotive? Is that really the answer? Maybe for some smaller boats and, and up to maybe 10 meters and in inland environments, yes, 100%. But is it really the solution for all of the yards that are also sponsors here at the Blue Innovation Dock? We had yesterday the CEO panel where we had the major yards, the CEOs, really discussing what is the future of sustainable propulsion. And the answer is there's not one answer. There's many different answers. Uh, for some it may be hydrogen, for some it may be electric propulsion. In some cases it's biofuels. So all of these questions need to be answered. And there's the additional dimension, and that's why it's great that we have the European Commission, uh, Linus Vosterides, but also in a few minutes, Jan Meyerhofer, who deals with the Recreational Craft Directive in the European Commission, um, here to really discuss the study, the outcomes of the study, and what does it mean for future emission limits, for future propulsion, how is this regulated, how do we get the support in the infrastructure, in the marinas. So these are the questions that we need to answer, and we're sure that this study will help provide that information for the regulators to take those decisions. Perfect. Thank you. I think uh, you have other appointments, Petros. Yeah? Yeah. They are already nervous in that corner. Thank you very much. Yeah? Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Um, so they were already mentioned, two partners with this study, two additional partners. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Steffen from ADAC, so Automobile Club of Germany. Um, they did, I think, 500 to 600 interviews. Stefan will tell us more about this. Thank you. Thank you for this introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, um, my name is Stefan Hewig. I'm responsible for the special interest topics uh, um, at the tourism department of ADAC EV. Um, it's the non-profit part of uh, the ADAC group. And special interest stands for advising uh, target groups like skippers, boaters, um, campers, and globetrotters, and other, other kinds of target groups, which are special in the touristical area. I'm very pleased uh, to uh, give you today a brief insight uh, to our online panel we established in the last, last half year, which is called ADAC Skipper Club. Uh, the survey of the panelists um, according alternative drives um, in the ADC Skipper Club is, the part of, uh, is one part of the results which Silvia and uh, Christian will, will show, will present to you in more detail later on. At this point, I would like to thank you uh, for this good cooperation between CTEACH, um, Bo Düsseldorf and EBI. It was a wonderful cooperation. Okay, I do it by myself. <laughs> 
So, most of you will know the ADAC is the largest automobile and mobility club in Europe, Europe which stands for help, advice, protection. Um, our department, no, not our department in exactly that, more than 21 million members um, trust in. Um, and another impressive number underlines this exemplarily, um, the yellow angels of the ADAC breakdown assistance help a member every nine seconds on average. So this is the one uh, thing, but we are also um, offer a lot of touristical information and services um, for our members. Our de department is, for example, responsible for very popular applications uh, like you probably know, the so-called Spritpreise app, it's the fuel prices um, app and e-charging app um, in Germany, which is very famous, and we have the ADAC Trips app for the touristical points of interest um, all around the, the world. In total, and you can see it here, um, we have more than 100 million contacts with our members and customers per year on tourism topics. Um, the services for boaters, which I would like, you, would, uh, li would like to present you more detailed, are also enclosed in that number. So, for about one million boating members um, of the ADAC, the core service uh, so far has been the ADAC Skipper portal, um, which includes the largest freely accessible uh, marina database with about 3,500 marinas all around Europe, as well as information on cruising um, grounds and topics such as driving licenses for leisure boats and uh, information for trailer drivers and so on. In addition to the portal, um, there is now a new um, app available, the ADAC Skipper app. It can be used on the way and of course, on the boat um, when you are on the way, and we are presenting it right here at the boat Düsseldorf in a beta version um, at our stand in Hall 14 to just visit us and inform you about this, uh, this new Skipper app. It'll be launched in, the, uh, in May in the stores of uh, uh, Apple and, um, and Google, so you can have it as a free version, basis version um, for free, um, and can test it for yourself. The ADAC also stands um, for, or runs, a uh, rather big registration. Um, we have the largest uh, boat register in Germany, um, and uh, there we have more than 100,000 registered boat, registered boat um, with the ADAC. And also we have a houseboat and charter comparison platform. Um, which successfully assists uh, those skippers who want to uh, charter boats. Our range of services um, is completed by our work for uh, the interests of our skippers, um, work in the representation of the interests of boaters. This is firm firmly anchored in our constitution of the ADAC. The member is always um, at the center of the ADAC's attention. So, in order to remain successful with our services and benefits, um, we essentially have to be very close to the, the needs and the requirements of our customers um, and members. Following the motto, customer first, we therefore regularly um, conduct market research and involve them in improving our services and develop more services in various ways, for example, with youth labs. Um, since a few months, we have gathered experience um, in the pilot project of the ADAC Skipper Club, which is the online customer and member panel with boaters. By boaters, we b thereby mean, you have see, seen it down there, um, persons who are aged at least 16 years, live in Germany and have been on a boat as a skipper or as a passenger um, in the last three years and sailors, motorboat drivers, and houseboat tourists are equally addressed here. The survey, um, Alternative Drive, in German, Alternative Antriebe, um, was carried out together with the EBI, and it is based on their content-related um, survey requests regarding the sustainability um, when buying a boat. 
the participation rate in this survey, you can see here, was 35% uh, with responses from 532 participants of the ADAC Skipper Club. What is interesting is that 75% uh, uh, of the respondents stated that they are, that they are either already own, uh, owner of a bo boat or are intended to purchase um, a boat in the next two years. To see it in the whole, since May 2022, we have been able to recruit more than 1,600 people um, to this skipper club. Anyone who falls within our definition, I told you uh, the last slide, of boaters can sign up for the skipper club. However, so far we have not excluded anyone uh, from the service who does not fit this definition. This applies for about 20% of the Skipper Club members, and in reverse, more than 2,270 is the right number panelists fit the definitions of boat, as you have seen. We uh, uh, compared the social demographic structure of the Skipper Club members, and you can see this on the uh, right side here, um, uh, with the boaters of the total uh, population using the results of a market research uh, representative comparative market research conducted in October last year. Um, and the result of this comparison, comparison shows this, that Skipper Club's members are, as you can see, older um, than the normal population and significantly more often male. And in addition, there are significantly more boat owners um, among the members and they more often have a recreational boat license. Our panelists are therefore boaters with a lot of experience and uh, expertise. A total of eight surveys have been conducted so far on a few issues like digital helpers, uh, boat fares, sustainability and boat registration. And selected results from these surveys um, can be found in our articles which are available on our Skipper portal online for free, of course. Okay, so finally, um, I want to share with you results from a previous survey regarding the sustainability in nautical tourism. Tourismus. As you can see, for most of the respondents, sustainability is important or very important. You can see it on the left side. 55% say on the question how important is sustainability to you when planning your next cruise. It's important, 32%, or very important, 23%. Um, percent. So this shows the importance of this topic for the industry. And on the right side, you can see the evaluation um, with 19%, a large, um, a, large, a large proportion of the respondents um, consider water protection in particular to be an important issue. Further results show that skippers become active when talking about environment. They collect rubbish waste from the water and take part in clean-up activities. So now I don't want to strain your attention any further, and I'm happy to uh, uh, say thank you for your attention, and now please enjoy the results of the study, which will be presented from Christian and Celia. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Stefan. I uh, just downloaded the fuel price app. I didn't have it. Um, <laughs> so um, we heard already about uh, CTEACH, and i like to call uh, Celia and Christian on stage to present the results of the study. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, presentation of the most important study on sustainability in our industry, which uh, I've already mentioned was initiated by Boot and commissioned by EBI. My name is Christian Esteva, and together with my colleague, Celia Tiege, we are from CTEACH, and we've been working on this study for the last months, and we both together are going to present the, the study results. This is... Uh, Okay, so this is how we structure um, uh, 
uh, the presentation of the results. We're going to start with a bit of a background and, and summary. And as you know, we interview customers and we got the results of the customers from the ADAC, but also from the industry. I will present the customers and my colleague Celia will present uh, the results from the industry and the conclusions of the study. Okay, so our personal and the voting industry future will be very strongly influenced and determined by the EU regulations and goals. You all heard about the European Climate Act and the European Green Deal, which, you know, aims at uh, climate neutral neutrality by 2050. So therefore, this study aims to know what are the developments and targets of the voting industry. As a summary, we interview uh, 38 uh, inter uh, representatives from the industry and also uh, customers, and we received uh, 532 responses from the ADA survey. So, if we start with the customer results, uh, as an interview sample, we interview people from all these countries you can see here, so Portugal, Finland, Sweden, Germany, Holland, Belgium, Romania, and Turkey, which give us a really European-wide perspective on the results. If we analyze the results, so over 50% uh, are between 40 and 50 years. Also, over 50% of the interviews own a boat, and the majority were male. So let's start with the, with the results. As you can see here, which are the factors which influence the decision-making process for customers? So in first position, we have price. In second position, comfort. In third position, size. And in fourth position, speed. And I'm not reading wrong. Sustainability is in third there, but only because we mention it during the interviews. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been mentioned. What is the role of the new technologies in customer life? Well, they're happy with the electric engines, but they, see they are concerned because of the range and the speed and also the reliability of the engines. It was interesting to see that people uh, were very positive to, to make changes in their personal lives regarding sustainability, meaning they recycle and so on, but they're not ready yet to, to work or to make concessions on their boats. So which is the most uh, trusted propulsion time uh, for the customers in the future? So electric power was the winner, followed by hydrogen. But it's interesting to see that fossil fuels will also mention, and they occupy like the third and fourth position. You can see diesel there. Also, which is the main factor to purchase a boat with low or zero emission propulsion technology? Again, price was the winner. <coughs> We had in second position uh, regulatory pressure and societal pressure, but again, price uh, remains in the first position. We also asked them uh, about the satisfaction with what the market is offering right now in terms of low and zero emission. And yeah, uh, they seem to be happy with uh, what the industry is, is offering because they understand that new technologies will, it will take some time. To, um, to have new developments. But for example, uh, answer number four here was very interesting. This customer said that the industry does not do enough, especially for boats from 12 meters. So you can only see changes in small boats and only on demand, so meaning if they ask it. So this was the qualitative data. But we also had quantitative data from ADAC, and it was very nice to, to have it, because you will see in a minute that qualitative data validated the results of the quantitative data. If we have a look at the survey details, uh, so 55% were more representative from the power boat, and 38% sailing boats. So, for the ADAC, uh, which are the deciding factors when buying a boat? Again, comfort, price, design and appearance, and we have to go to uh, position number seven to see sustainability. 
which of these types of propulsion and fuels are most interesting for you and relevant when buying a boat? Yeah, if you remember the results from the qualitative data, electric drive was the winner here as well. And fossil, fossil fuels occupy the second position. Hydrogen is sort of making its presence, but electric and fossil are still winning. OK, and here they asked them about sustainability on their boats. It's nice to see that they are aware uh, of the climate problems. And they, they all see the small issues on the boat. But uh, they don't seem to connect yet with the sustainability on the propulsion, on the engines. And now I give the word to my colleague, Celia, who will present the results from the industry. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, yes, that is, I think, for all of us, the most interesting part. Um, so we've conducted interviews with uh, the most representative companies in Europe and some international players as well. Um, and we interviewed boat builders as much as engine manufacturers. Um, and after doing the interviews, we realized there was a pattern. Um, and then we, for the results presentation, we classified the uh, boating industry into four different sectors. Uh, one is, the first one is boats more or less up to 10 meters with outboard engines. Then boats over 10 meters with inboard engines, one or two. Sailboats and engine manufacturers, because they all have similar, these groups they each have similar circumstances, similar customers, similar um, hindrances to deal with. So starting with the first group, um, engine uh, boat builders of boats up to 10 meters and uh, Build it, having boats with outboard engines, these might be small dinghies, uh, ribs or also rigid boats, but generally with an engine which is maybe even portable or at least detachable. Um, these companies at the moment, when looking into uh, alternative drives, they will prioritize electric engines. Um, they will use solar as well, more as an ad addition uh, to help with uh, LEDs or other functions. Um, and they will look also into hydrogen, but they're clearly more working on, um, on electric drives. And some of the companies are very specializing in using this because, as we've seen before, the customers are demanding and are looking into electric drives. So some companies capitalize on that and making it their main philosophy and specialize on electric boats and e-drives completely. Then the next category is the boats over 10 meters and with an inboard. Um, these are typically uh, boats between 10 and 24 meters, cruisers. The customer pattern is completely different. They're looking more for comfort. Um, and also speed on top of that. The boats are heavier. So for them, it's a, quite a different picture and different challenges. Um, most of the companies we interviewed are still in the planning and development phase. Um, and their most favored solution is hybrid solutions where they are looking into electric engines uh, where the batteries are charged with diesel generators. Uh, that seems to be an option which is most doable at the moment. Um, pure electric propulsion is not really viable for them because there is restrictions for pure electric propulsion in the range of, of, of the boats. Um, the charging infrastructure is not there yet. Um, the power is not enough for the bigger boats. So there's lots of constraints which have to be overcome. Um, many of the companies are collaborating at the moment with the automotive industry 
trying to work on hydrogen developments as well, hoping that that might be the next step, which or other fuel, alternative fuels as well. And then we have the sailboat uh, building companies. For them, it's not that much of a challenge, it seems, uh, because clearly for them, uh, Electric or uh, alternative propulsion engines are only an auxiliary form of propulsion, and the sail, the wind, is the main idea. They have two different parts of customers: the ones which go coastal, where they can, with electric engines, quite easily change to alternative propulsion, um, and the wind, and they can provide good solutions. More difficult it is when it's sailing boats which want to go offshore. Um, and then, again, the hybrid systems, like with the bigger motorboats, are at the moment the favored uh, solution into which the companies are developing. Then we spoke to quite a lot of engine manufacturers and really the biggest ones on the market. Um, and the main picture is Electric propulsion is what many are developing into at the moment and uh, where they are researching and developing new solutions. Um, and that's mainly for outboard motors, obviously. Um, and then also hybrid propulsion systems um, for inboard engines. Um, but they're also looking into alternative fuels uh, like uh, methanol or um, other uh, biofuels or hybrid solutions. Hydrogen is something some companies are developing ideas, but I don't think it's very far developed so far. Um, the problem is for the engine manufacturer, similarly, the infrastructure, uh, because if there's no charging possibilities or no hydrogen fuel stations, uh, then that is a problem. The other problem they are, they've noted quite a lot is, or barriers, is regulations. Um, for example, there's the fear that when they develop hydrogen tank, uh, hydrogen solutions, and they need special tanks, will these tanks be accepted or uh, in the regulations, or are they developing into one direction and then it's not going to be uh, possible to carry on with that? And they're really looking for some global solutions. They are a bit worried about developing something in Europe which then in America there are other different uh, regulations which contradict and they have to develop different solutions for different regions. And in some cases, manufacturers are even waiting for boat manufacturers because obviously the hull design is a constraint for new uh, engine solutions uh, with regard to room and where it's a bit of a each waiting for the other one. So we, this is just a very short uh, summary of everything. This is where we then later in the study, you will find this, we have uh, made this overview where you can see all the different segments and in a very short main uh, conclusion, uh, the main direction these different segments are uh, looking. And just to conclude, um, the industry is and the customers are starting more and more to develop into sustainability. Um, offers are changing and demands is changing. But so far, from what we could see in our study, only in small segments. It's not the overall industry yet. Um, they are all aware of the necessity. Um, the problem is that the industry at the moment is facing a difficult situation where it has to accelerate its own development of alternative drives and at the same time it has to cater for the demand what the customers are looking for which is also affordable prices 
range and comfort. At the moment, there's not one technology to decarbonize the boating industry, um, which covers everything or even all the different segments. Um, each of them has its own challenges of implementation. And most market players are still engaged in understanding what the problems are, what the demands are, and where the future will be. Some are developing new solutions, um, but the general uh, boating industry is sort of looking where it can go to. Regulations are likely to be put in place at some stage, and the problem is that then the consumers will react locally and nationally and internationally. Um, and therefore, our conclusion is that really the boating industry needs to be ahead and needs to really be ready to react to any new requirements and expectations. So what we would like to do with this study and with its results is to raise awareness within the boating industry um, that it is time for boat builders, engine manufacturers, associations, and consumer representatives to come together and to form a task force and to develop joint strategies to see where this is going in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sir. Yeah, just, uh, just a second. Stay for one second. And thank you, Christian. Um, just to mention, can you download this somewhere? Um, that is it will available? Be not yet. That mm. will be downloadable from the board um, website. website. Yeah, that's okay. Petros will we make it available. After the show. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. So everybody thank knows you. because very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. you. <coughs>